Welcome to I Like to Run Line. Here's a really interesting problem from the JEE main test bank, and it deals with moment of inertia. Now, when it comes to moment of inertia, it is really good that you memorize as many different shapes as possible automatically so you don't have to try and calculate it on the test because you simply don't have the time. If you need to spend a lot of time trying to calculate the moment of inertia of any of these objects, you're going to run out of time because you only have the three minutes. So let's read the problem and see what's going on. It says the moment of inertia, mi, of four bodies having the same mass and the same radius are reported as, and here we have four statements, i1, i2, i3, and i4. i1 is the moment of inertia of a thin, a thin circular ring about its diameter. I2 is the moment of inertia of a circular disk about an axis perpendicular to the disk and going through the center. Moment of inertia 3 is, I3 is the moment of inertia of a solid cylinder about its axis and I4 is the moment of inertia of a solid sphere about its diameter. And then they give us these four statements. For example, I1 equals I2 equals I3, which is then less than I4, or I1 plus I2 is equal to I3 plus 5 halves I4, and so forth. So which of those four statements is correct? It's only one of them. So now I did draw this on the board already to save us a bit of time. The test didn't come with that. So you basically have to think in your, in your head and say, okay, what is the moment of inertia of these different things? First of all, the first one threw me a a bit of a loop because I, I'm not familiar with that one and I haven't memorized that one. The moment of inertia of a thin circular ring about its diameter. So I didn't know the moment of inertia that now I can quickly go calculate it but that probably takes me about three minutes and that would be all the time I have available. So I said okay let me skip this one let's go to the other three see if I know those. The moment of inertia of a circular disk about an axis perpendicular to the disk and going through the center. That's an easy one. This is equal to one half m r squared. How about this one? The moment of inertia of a solid cylinder about its axis, well it's basically a disc but made longer, the moment of inertia is the same, one half m r squared. And then the moment of inertia of a solid sphere. Now the solid sphere, since the mass is closer to the center of rotation, is smaller than the moment of inertia of a hollow sphere. And I always remember that it's going to be something m r squared. Now for a hollow sphere, it's a bigger number. It's two-thirds. For a solid sphere, it's two-fifths. So hopefully we've memorized at least those three. And this one, well, that was a question mark. Didn't know. And I'll show you how to calculate it in just a moment. So by only knowing those three, can we figure out the right answer? Well, notice that I2 and I3 are equal. So notice that right here, and let me use a different color, so that makes this correct, and that makes this correct for now. All right. Oh, oh no, we don't know what I1 is, sorry. It makes this correct, and same over here, it makes this correct, right? So we know that I2 and I3 are equal. Now, looking at I4, is I3 bigger or smaller than I4, and it looks like half is bigger than two-fifths, which means that this is correct here, but this would be wrong here. So we know that this is not correct, and this may be correct. Now, here on both of these, I need to know I1 in order to answer these questions. If I don't know I1, I'm not sure if those questions are correct. I do know that these are equal to each other, so I2 and I3 is equal to each other. I2 and I3 is equal to each other, so the question is, is I1 equal to 5 halves I4? Well, 5 halves I4, let's go ahead and do that. So what would be 5 over 2 I4? Well, that would be 5 over 2 I4 would be 2 fifths mr squared, which is equal to mr squared. And definitely, um, see here, uh, notice that uh, in this case right here, there's no way that I1 would be equal to mr squared. There's no way, because the only way you can have uh, something equal to mr squared is that all the mass is a distance r away from the center rotation, which is not the case. So right away, 
I realize that this cannot be true, just from deduction. So now we're left with C and D. So here, notice that I1 has to be smaller than I4 for this to be true. And I4 is the moment of inertia of a solid sphere, which has a very small move, moment of inertia, 2 fifths mr squared. It's doubtful that anything else, unless it's solid, could have a smaller moment of inertia than 2 fifths mr squared. So it's very unlikely that C is correct, which means D by default would have to be correct. And then if that's true, if D is correct, then I1 equals I2. In other words, I1 for that would have to be one-half mr squared. And if you don't know that, you just have to go on faith, so to speak, say, well, since everything else cancels out, this must be the correct answer, which indeed it is, which makes I1 equal to one-half mr squared. But what if you wanted to know? So let's say that's all the time you have on the test, you're just going to choose answer D, which would be correct. You move on because you've eliminated all other possibilities as not being possible. But how do you calculate the moment of inertia of this? Well, the way to do that would be as follows. So let's say we have a ring like this, and we'll put on the x-y axis. So this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis, and let's say that we take a small element like here, let's call that dm. And of course, the mass would be proportional to the length. So we could use the length instead of mass. And so we can therefore call dm as equal to the radius times the angle d theta. So we could call this r times d theta. And then if we draw a line straight back down, and we call this y, and this is r, let me put the r on the other side right there, and let's call this angle here theta. Then I can say that y is equal to the radius r, times the sine of theta. Okay? So then I can say that the moment of inertia of that small element right here, the moment of inertia, call it di, is equal to dm, the mass, times y squared. In other words, di is equal to dm times r squared sine squared of theta. And since dm is equal to r d theta, I can say that di is equal to r cubed sine square of theta times d theta. And then, of course, if I want to find i, i would be the integral of di, which is equal to r cubed, because that's a constant, times the integral of sine square of theta d theta, and I would integrate from 0 to pi. Now, hopefully you remember the integral of sine squared theta, so this would be equal to r cubed times theta divided by 2 minus 1 quarter the sine of 2 theta evaluated from 0 to pi. And then you realize that when you go plug in 0, you get 0 here, and the sine of 0 is 0, so you get 0. When you plug in pi, you get pi over 2, but the sine of 2 pi, or would be also zero, so the only thing left here is that this would be equal to uh, one-half pi r cubed. So that would be i1, because essentially that's what we're looking for. Now, I only did a half, but that would be half the mass, so if you double it, you get the same result. So it would be the same result for doing half or doing a whole, because I only took half the mass versus the whole mass. But one half pi r cubed, how does that work? Well, actually, how do you find m? Well, you know that m is equal to the integral of dm, which is equal to r times the integral of d theta, and we're going to integrate from zero to pi, half a, half a loop. So this would be equal to r times theta from zero to pi, which is equal to r times, uh, yeah, r times pi. So, if I separate that up, I could write this as, uh, let's see here, pi times r times a half r squared, and of course pi r is equal to mass, so this would be one half mass r squared, and notice, sure enough, the moment of inertia 
of a thin circular ring rotating about its diameter is actually equal to 1 half mr squared, which is what we had to surmise. And so therefore now definitively we know that I1 is equal to I2 is equal to I3, and all three are definitely bigger than I4, so answer D is indeed correct. Do you have the time to do this in three minutes? Of course not, you don't. So we were kind of able to get the right answer by deducing that the other three were not possible. And that is how it's done. Mm -hmm. it's, all, it's the same as the disc, yes. regardless of the thickness of the disc. Regardless of how thick the disc is, that's right. It's, it, those are essentially the same thing. Yep, yep. I think you even think of the ring, it's the same as a disc. It would be if it were to rotate uh, through this line right here, that's but it's rotating to that. Because right. if it's a disc rotating here, then it actually would be mr squared because all the mass and distance are away from the center of rotation. But that's the problem. It wasn't this one, it was this. That throws you for a loop because you typically don't see that in almost any textbook. So it's kind of a unique thing and I have to figure it out on the fly. You just don't have the time to do that, unfortunately. <laughs> so even though this is a JE main problem, <laughs> it can get pretty tricky, especially if you don't know the value of this one. Process of, uh, process of elimination did indeed work in this case. <laughs>